If you want a Halo style head strap, but you don't want to spend a lot of money, then here I've got two from KK Cobb VR. This is their Q3 and the Q3 Pro. They're non-battery and battery versions of their Halo style head straps. I'm also going to be comparing it against the Bobo VR S3 Pro head strap, which is a lot more expensive to see how it fares. Let's get into it. So KK Cobb VR did send me both of these to review, but they're not paying for a sponsor in this video, so you are as always going to get my honest opinion. And we'll start with the battery version first, and we'll do the non-battery version later. I really do like these dials at the front because they allow you to really easily move your headset further away from your face or closer. So just with the twist of a dial, it just means it's super easy to sort of crank it in really tight if you're playing like a fitness game or a fighting game or something that's fast moving. And then you can just loosen it and push it out a bit when you're doing something a little bit more relaxing like watching a movie or playing cubism or something like that. So it's almost like you're kind of getting an elite style head strap and a halo style head strap all built into one. And one thing that's often an issue with head straps is how compatible are they with various facial interfaces? Now, it's not an issue with this one really at all because there is so much room between the headset bar that's up here or the forehead bar and any facial interface that is in here. It's really not a problem with this head strap. It is a little bit fiddly getting to the adjustment dial at the back, especially with the battery attached to it like you've got here because there's not much room between the battery and the dial. You can just sort of move that out of the way. Um, it's a minor gripe nothing really big. There's also plenty of padding in here too. We've got some padding in the top strap over here. On the back there is also plenty of padding for the back of your head and then you've got padding for the forehead bar as well. But as for the top strap, yes, you can wear it, but if you set this up properly so that your forehead takes most of the weight of the hair strap across your forehead, you honestly don't really need that. And I found myself taking it off and the same for the front as well. And it just actually made the whole thing a lot easier to use. So I'm gonna take it off, which is quite easy done. You just take the straps off. I'm gonna put that down there somewhere and we'll undo that as well. There we go. So that cushioning on the forehead bar on the back cushion itself means that you can game for hours with this head strap on your headset. Now, of course, if you do want to play for hours at a time, then you need the power to be able to do it as well. And this is where this head strap comes with a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. When you do put the battery onto the head strap, do make sure that the two holes at the top here line up with the two prong sections there and then it magnetically just attaches and will start charging your headset straight away. There is a button on the top so you can turn it on and off if you want. And there's four little LEDs as well that tell you how charged the battery is. And when you want to charge it, there's a USB-C port on the top and the battery takes about three and a half hours to charge up to full. I'm going to do some battery tests in a bit, comparing it against the battery from the Bobo VR S3 Pro so you can see how it compares. Is there anything that I don't like about this head strap? Well, not really. There's just a couple of things that I think you should be aware of before you go and buy it. First is around the fit, and it's not really an issue. Again, just something you should be aware of because yes, the padding on the forehead bar and the back headrest make it super comfortable to wear. And honestly, when you wear it, it really does take the weight off your forehead, the weight off your face, and it makes the Quest 3 and the Quest 3S seem a lot lighter. However, I did find that the forehead bar was tighter on my forehead. Now I've got a big noggin of a head and so generally I have trouble with anything fit in my head anyway. So I did find it sort of quite tight on both sides compared to say something like the Bobo VR S3 Pro that I found was a lot wider on my forehead. Still, if you don't like halo head straps because you find them quite loose and you prefer a tighter fit head strap or you've got a smaller head, then the Q3 Pro might actually be a better head strap for you. The other thing that we need to talk about is the battery because on here, as I said, is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. And to be honest, the amount of power has never really been an issue for the Quest 3. What's been an issue is how quickly could you deliver that power to the headset. So the Quest 3 is definitely more hungry 
and power hungry than the Quest 2. Bobo VR themselves had that problem when they originally released their B2 batteries, so they released their B100 battery. So in testing, I was comparing both of these to see how well they could keep my headset charged because on paper, they are both 10,000 milliamp hour batteries. Now, if you actually look at the spec of the batteries on the back, the KK Cobb VR can deliver power at 15 watts, whereas the Bobo VR can deliver power at up to 35 watts. Now that might sound as though this one is way better than that one, but in reality, that's not the case at all. So I tested both these with my headset at around 44% battery before I started plugging these in. I also used an ammeter to actually measure the watts and the voltage and the ampage so I could get an accurate measurement. And what I found was that the KK Cobb VR battery delivered around 14 to 15 watts of power to the Quest 3, whereas the Bobo VR one delivered power at around 18 to 19 watts. So you're getting about an extra five watts of power delivered to the Quest 3. Now that doesn't matter too much because in actual reality, when you actually use these to play games, both of these delivered around three hours of gameplay to your headset so you could play way longer than you could with just the headset by itself. So yes, the KK Cobb VR battery does deliver power slightly slower than the Bobo VR one. So in some games, if it's completely maxing out the Quest 3, you might find the drain on the Quest 3 happening at a slightly quicker rate than it does on this one. But in reality, for most people, it's not gonna make much of a difference. It is also worth pointing out as well that it's not the batteries that decide how fast the power is pulled but it's the headset. You could have a battery that's got a 100 watt power delivery capacity or capability, but if the headset only asks for 15 watts, it's only gonna deliver 15 watts. I do wanna to quickly touch on the non-battery version that's here. I'm not gonna put it onto the headset itself, but you can kind of see the differences side by side, all the similarities as well. Largely, it is exactly the same head strap. So it's the same forehead, you've got the same ratchets on the front, you've got the same arms, the same attachment dials at the back as well. There are some differences though, most notably in the fact that the top strap is not padded, it's just a thin bit of fabric that's here. And on the back, you don't have any padding, it's just this soft silicon cup. And obviously there's no battery that comes with this. It does mean that your Quest 3 does feel a little front heavy because you don't have the counterweight acting to offset that weight. It is worth talking about weight here so you know how much extra weight you're adding to your headset. Unsurprisingly, the non-battery version, the Q3, is the lightest one here. It only weighs 253 grams. The Q3 Pro, on the other hand, is 263 grams, and that's without the battery. Chuck a battery on top, and that's gonna weigh 444. And if you compare that to the Bobo VR S3 Pro, well, on its own, it weighs 360 grams, or 545, if you chuck on the battery. So the Q3 Pro is about 100 grams lighter than the Bobo VR S3 Pro. So which of these should you buy, if any? Well, I think it depends. I think if you're on a tight budget and you just want to upgrade the elasticated head strap that comes with your Quest 3 or Quest 3S, then the standard Q3 at only $23 is a good option. If you not only want to upgrade your head strap, but you also want to game for longer, then a battery head strap is definitely the way to go. And at $50, the KK Cobb VR Q3 Pro head strap is great value for money. It's not as heavy, nor as wide, nor charges as quickly as the Bobo VR S3 Pro head strap however it is almost half the price at only $50. You'll still get hours of extra gameplay out of it and for some that's enough. I will put links to both of them in the description down below so that you can check them out for yourself. If you want to check out some other options then be sure to check out the link up here. Thanks for watching if you have enjoyed the video please don't forget to like and share it consider subscribing if you're not and as always I'll see you in the next one.